2007, millions of children's items from mainstream toy companies were recalled due to dangerous levels of lead, prompting the 2008 passage of the Consumer Protection Safety Improvement Act. Even with these new regulations, a recent investigation by KQED's Quest series found dangerously high levels. Joining me now is Juan Ha, reporter with KQED Public Radio, California Report. Juan, let's start with the findings of uh, your investigation for Quest. What did you find? Well, Belva, we essentially wanted to test the effectiveness of the new consumer product uh, safety law that went into effect in February. Um, and we essentially went on a shopping spree uh, throughout here, through here in Bay, the Bay Area as well as other parts of California. Uh, we bought up about 200 children's products, including toys, and we uh, had the assistance of the Center for Environmental Health. They tested the items for us, and uh, we found that one in five of the items came up positive for lead and with really high, le high lead levels in some cases. Here's just a sampling of, of the items. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a closer look. Here I've got a, a plastic, you know, children's car and uh, this uh, car originally had been coated with a yellow paint. We took it to, to a laboratory and the laboratory basically scratched off the paint and tested it and this paint uh, essentially was ten times the lead limit. Mm -hmm. Not something that you'd want your, your kid to be playing with. Um, and what's interesting about that is, you know, the, the lead limits uh, the, that, that govern paint, they've been in place for the last 20 years. And so it really begs the question of whether manufacturers, uh, toy makers are really serious because about... You're looking at a packet of little cars here, you know, all brightly painted. I mean, what kind of warning? Why would you even suspect that there was a higher level of lead here? Well, that's a thing. As a parent, as a grandparent, somebody who buys toys for kids, you can't really tell just by looking or even feeling the items at all. Um, you really would need a test kit. And in, uh, some of the test kits that are available in the market aren't really that reliable. I mean, so you really do need to bring it to, uh, you know, a, an agency or a laboratory to get it tested. So, I mean, that's the scary part as a parent. You don't really know for sure. Yeah. And many of them, I mean, this is a low price item, so you, you, the, to test it would probably cost you more than the toys. So it really does put parents in a pretty tight spot. Right, and also, I mean, a lot of these items we bought at discount stores, um, you know, dollar stores. They, they would make perfect stocking stuffers. And a lot of these manufacturers, even though they may be aware that there is a law in place, they really simply can't afford to test these items when they're mm -hmm. selling it for $1.99. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you this because this is an item that my six-year-old daughter, Quinn, would love to, to have as a stocking stuffer. It's a, it's a metal uh, hair clip. Mm -hmm. And the problem with metal jewelry like this is that it's often coated with lead um, and or it's made of lead. And in fact, this piece contains 32% lead, oh, uh, not something that you'd want you know, your, your daughter uh, to mouth or even touch, right, as she's putting it in, in her hair. Let's move to what all girls seem to know about. <laughs> Hannah Montana. Yes. It's, big, it's big around our house. Uh, this is a diary set, and what's interesting about this is it carries the, the logo of a company that a lot of families know and trust, Disney. Mm -hmm. We actually found several Disney items uh, that had high level levels of lead. Disney says, of course, that you know they ask uh, that their uh, licensees test the products and make sure that the products uh, meet all standards. But the problem is, you know, they might, might test the first batch mm -hmm. or the second or third batch, but then after that they might switch manufacturers, new paint might be used, new kind of material uh, might be used, and so then safety kind of goes this out the window. This is really complicated. And what do we have over here with is it the interior of the ball or the yeah, exterior? Yeah, you know, the, another category of toys uh, and items that, that are problematic are vinyl, vinyl products. Um, you know, soft kind of plush, soft plastic mm -hmm. is often problematic because the lead is often used to stabilize, uh, you know, the materials and kind of bind it together. And so this, you know, I could see my newborn son, you know, mouthing it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, it's not something that you would want um, uh, a child mouthing at all because you know, just minuscule amounts of lead could enter the child's uh, bloodstream and you could cause irreparable uh, brain damage potentially. And mm. stuff that normally, you know, you wouldn't even see in, yeah. in the child, but it, it, you would really need a blood test to really confirm uh, that there's a problem there. Mm -hmm. So this looks pretty harmless, but not so. 
Not so, especially since it's a lunchbox. <laughs> so it does not make for a very appetizing lunch at all. Uh, the surface here is coated with, with lead. And uh, we actually contacted Ross, which carries uh, this lunchbox, and they've pulled it off the shelf. But you know, you can imagine, I mean, thousands of children, I'm sure, have this lunchbox um, and maybe even using it today. So that's the ultimate. You can do these stories, and they can pull these items off, but you have no idea what the, uh, the, the vast universe out there. Right. I mean, you know, there, there are only so many agencies that, that uh, do test for lead um, on a regular basis, like the Center for Environmental Health. Um, there's also the government uh, uh, organization, the Consumer Product Safety Commission. They also will issue recalls and occasionally will test items as well. But it's really up to the consumers to be aware to be aware of what they're buying and to really avoid kind of these three categories of, these of toys plastics. Yeah, that we've, we've mentioned. Well, we want to thank you. At least we know these things. We can maybe keep them out of some homes and out of the mouths of right. children. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Well, you can see more of that research on our website, kqed.org slash this week, and find the question of the week. This week, what are your beliefs about climate change and how is that reflected in your lifestyle?